15 February 1964, in the middle of the Indian Ocean, a place called Peros Banos, situated in the Chagos Archipelago, I was born. Life was very peaceful, and everyone worked in copra industries. We have our own house, we have our culture, we have our tradition, and we all live as one family. It was a very wonderful and peaceful place. In 1968, my sister Noeli, who was one and a half year, had been hurt by a wheel cart. When my mom go to the dispensary in Paris Banos, she had been told by the nurse that she had to travel to Mauritius to have better treatment for my sister. Both mom and dad decided to go to Mauritius to have treatment for my sister, but in a view to return back to Chagos, because all our belongings we have left on Chagos. It was a decision taken by both my mom and my dad. In 1968, we traveled to Mauritius. Arriving in Mauritius, my sister was admitted in the hospital. And fortunately, three months after, my sister passed away. When mom and dad decided to return, I remember I was with, with my mom, going to an office in the center of Port Louis, where we go to register our name to return back to, to Chagos. And I still remember the key of the padlock was in the pocket of my father. When my mom asked the officer that we want to return now, and she had been told by the officer that it would be impossible for her to return because the highland had been given to America to build a US military base. It was a shock for my family to face this kind of life, facing with problems like drugs, alcohol and prostitution, even jobless and bad education. We were forcibly tried to live on our, on our birthplace, but unfortunately, we, we cannot. I remember my father got a stroke, and suddenly my mom had to work in five different places in order to feel the family. My sister worked as babysitter, and we were still at primary school, after school hours, we have to go to the cemetery to sell water. Life was very difficult for us to face this because the main job which exists on Chagos did not exist in Mauritius. In 1973, the last group of Sagotian were forcibly removed from Chagos in order to make place for a US military base. We do understand that it was a plan for both government, UK and US, to remove all the habitants of Chagos in order to make place for US military base. Arriving in Mauritius, many were dumped in the slum of Port Louis. I still remember that some have to stay three days on the harbor. But the Sagotian women was very strong. They want their voice to be heard. They cannot accept that their children go to bed without having anything to eat. They started by demonstration, anger strike, get arrest with policemen, but they never give up because they want to express the message to the world because life was very wonderful there. In 1983, we created Chagos Refugees Group with the main objective to work for the welfare of Sagotian community and to encourage our youngs to have a better education. In 1990, I was invited by UNDP in a seminar. I still remember the focus was on 
Universal Declaration of Human Rights. I was focused on Article 9, who clearly said that everyone has the right to live on his birthplace. And I can't understand how could it be possible that our people cannot live on our birthplace. It's something that makes me becoming more involved. And I still remember when my son Oliver was in Standard 4. One day he came with me, with his atlas, and asked me, Dad, in what district you were born in Mauritius? I said, unfortunately, I'm not born in Mauritius. He said, no, you should be born in, in one of the districts of Mauritius, maybe Port Louis or Flak. I said, no, I was born in Paris Banos. He replied to me, Dad, could you one day bring us to Paris Banos? Because I want to see your place of birth. It's something that makes me becoming more involved. And at that time, I'm trying to get in touch with British lawyers to see, to challenge something very special based about the old British Ordinance in 1971, who preclude Sagotian by returning to Chagos, but allowed the UK and US soldiers to come and to enjoy themselves on my, on my birthplace. It's something that we just want to put in front because we want justice. We come with evidence, and at the same time, we discover all kinds of friction that they create. To say with all the declassified paper, we do understand that they describe us as Tarzan and Men on Friday, and even contractual workers. With all the evidence, because we have been living there for more than five generations. How could we be considered like that? And in a judgment on 3rd November 2000, the judge's conclusion was what had been done to us is unlawful. And the judge said that we are belongers. At that time, the UK government did not make appeal. They accept the judgment, but unfortunately they came with a new law in 2004. The so-called Her Majesty, who is supposed to protect the right of all citizens, she punished our right from returning to our birthplace because she returned the law as it was in the, in, the, in the beginning. That means that we are away from our place, whereas other people can still work and live on our birthplace. We never give up. We continue with all cases in High Court of Justice and in Supreme Court until 2010. They came with another obstacle to say that they want to declare Chagos as the largest marine protected area. And they want to protect the shark, but forget about human beings. It's something that we want, to, we want to challenge, and we challenge it. And even WikiLeaks reveal that is a, a plan of UK government and US government to prevent our people to return to Chagos, to return and live in Chagos. Because Chagos is not good for us, but it's good for others. In 2014, with all the pressure we have put on the British government, it finally came with the feasibility studies. We participate in that because we, we put pressure, and the, the conclusion that uh, they decided to have KPMG who direct these feasibility studies. The feasibility studies were very clear to see whether it is feasible to let people live or not. And the conclusion of KPMG record, re, report was very clear to say that there is no legal barrier to prevent Sagotian to return to Chagos. Because in Diego Garcia, we, has, we have existing facilities. How could I accept, how could our people accept that in Diego Garcia, we have everything. We have foreigners. We have Filipinos, we have Sri Lankans, we have Singaporeans, we have British, we have American, we have Mauritian, except 
We as natives, we don't have access. It is unfair. It is why we decided never to give up. And then same year, in 2014, the Motion government decided to bring the issue at an international dimension. And we were together with Motion government because we want justice to be done. And the matter had been brought into the United Nations General Assembly. And one year after a vote taking place on 22nd of June, where Mauritius got the support of 94 countries, and UK got 15. And the matter had been referred to the International Court of Justice. Our struggle continued. In the same year, the British government came with an offer, an offer of financial help, to say that we have the right to visit, but we don't have the right to stay. We said no. As far as concerns our dignity, as far as concerns our human rights, we will not accept it. And that it is now. We refuse categorically to accept the visit. We said that we were born on the highland. We need to have the right to live on the highland. Brothers and sisters, today, when we see how many people, refugees, leaving their countries to go to different parts of the world, to go to, Ameri to, to America, to go to Canada, to go to Europe, to go to Australia, looking for a safe place for their family. Why not Sagotian? How could it be possible that we as Sagotian could not be able to come and live freely on our birthplace? We all have the same color of blood. We are all human beings. How could we accept a government who's supposed to be a champion of human rights, who's supposed to give good example, but they themselves banish our fundamental rights? It's something that we want to let people know. We want to let the world know. We want to spread awareness among all the world to let know that there is something wrong done to our people. We said that something very important, it's we believe in what we are doing. We are not asking more. We are not asking less. But we, are, we ask that we need to have the same treatment because we are all equal on this world. We are all equal. Priority should be given to the Sagotian people to live. How could you imagine one day that other people are making barbecues on the, on the beach of Paris, Banos, and Salomon, whereas we, we are Sagotian, we are away? And you know, I have to just tell you that most of our people had passed away of sadness because they have never accomplished their, their, their dream to be able to return back to, to their homeland. This is why I'm so determined to continue my struggle. And I say, I have a dream. One day, Sagushan will be on Chagos. And let me tell you, I will never give up. Thank you.